Oh, it's like old times, Dan. <laughs> I did a little bit. I was cursing you this morning though, and I couldn't find the f***ing microphones. So this is my uh, CCM Thunder bike, which I've been uh, running in the DTRA Flat Track Championship. A gentleman's coming to buy it this evening, so I thought I'd just quickly grab camera Dan as he's back from holiday and run you through the bike so you can see what I've done to it. It started out life as a CCM R30. Dan will flash a picture up of what that was originally, but a white sort of supermoto thing with 17 inch gold wheels. Pretty f***ing hideous. But at the centre of it is this Rotax 604cc single power plant, which apparently is the thing to have in flat track racing. Now, I'm not saying that everyone else doesn't know what they're talking about, but for me personally, I just couldn't get on with this engine. It's, it's too smooth. It requires sort of real gentle inputs and I prefer something a bit more snappy. I prefer a twin like my old Kajiva here where you sort of a sniff of throttle and the back end steps out and then you can sort of control your slide that way. This, this for me, maybe if I had a couple of seasons on it, getting used to it, I'd be able to do something, um, but I've, I've just never really got on with it. So as far as the conversion goes, we'll start from the front. So obviously it, um, you have to run the control tyre in the UK Flat Track Series. This is last year's control tyre, which is a Maxxis. This year we're using Dunlop's 19 inch front and rear. This front wheel is actually off one of those, but the 600 version of a Kajiva Canyon had some spacers machined up by a guy from eBay. This is an R6 front end. It's the 5EB version, I think. Uh, so fully adjustable right way up fork and I've got some Survivor Customs fiberglass fork guards. He makes these himself. Now everyone goes for the conventional, well I say most everyone, most people go for the conventional fork conversion, just lower the bike. The upside down is a, not only a little bit stiffly sprung and more difficult in terms of having to lower them, but you get less steering lock. Now I run a little bit more than, than most people and let you into a little bit of secret here. I spent two hours making a special magnetic rubberized plug to go down the oil filler here, which started out life as a bit uh, slightly longer there. So I could angle grind that off without any of the swarf going inside. Made this uh, champagne cork and BMX seat post clamp plug for the top. And then got to the first race and was proudly showing Ross Herod my thing and he's got one a bit longer than me. And I said, why didn't you just notch the yoke out? And uh, I looked and thought, yeah, why the f didn't I just notch the yoke out and use the original filler neck as a lock stop? But anyway, you live and learn. And I've learned a lot from this bike in terms of modifying a bike to race. Now, what I should have done is just gone to Mike Hill at Survivor Customs and said, here Mike, there's an envelope full of cash can you turn this R30 into a bike and then let me know when you're done? Um, but as usual, I thought I know best. So I went and chatted to Mike about three years ago and then I looked at a photo of his bike on Instagram, blew that up and thought, well, if he can do it, I can do it, I'll copy it. But more for me, because it, it was a ball ache and all I ended up doing is texting Mike every five minutes to ask him questions. But I did repay some of that with buying a converted swing arm off him. Now the stock swing arm comes to about there and is too long and the bike just won't turn in properly with it being that long a wheelbase. So Mike shortens them up this end, chops the end off and then welds it all back together. Now what he does, be on this side but you don't need to come around down, is he mounts a, an R6 shock over on this side, side mounted up to another mount which he welds in here. Now again I thought I knew what I was doing. So I went for using the stock mount on the swing arm and the stock mount in the frame. And then uh, Tony at Hagen, we worked together to work out what spring rate I needed and what shock length I needed. And we ended up with this custom Hagen shock here, which because I did all the measuring, I didn't quite get right first time. So we've run through a couple of different spring rates and, and now it's much, much better and, and handles much better. But again, there were various bits going through the, through the build, which if I was actually charging for my time, it would have been more cost efficient and less stressful if I just said, Mike, can you build me one? But hey, anyway, I wouldn't have learned everything if I, if I hadn't done that. Uh, the tank is a Red Max uh, wood style tank. 
So it's a fiberglass and I've mounted that so that it's got a little bit of movement so that when you do have an off it doesn't start snapping off mounts because it's just a single mount here. Uh, and this is a knight style seat fiberglass again. Red Max do these. I bought the pad off him but this one I think I bought off a fellow competitor and then sprayed it Ford Focus metallic grey. It's a CCM aftermarket pipe off uh, Shopkeep Gareth's 644 Suzuki engine CCM and it was about that long so I just cut the end off and um, just plugged it back up. That is pretty much all I've done to the bike. A little bit of mod for the exhaust there but and yeah this chap who's coming to buy it tonight hopefully will have a bit more luck than I've had and we'll get a full season running the bike. Hopefully he gels with it and I need the money now to finish my other project. So my other bike is a that I'm having built as a 700cc uh, Yamaha Twin. So the money from this sale will go into helping me finish that, which at the moment is just languishing under a dust sheet. So I'm looking forward to getting back on that. And Nigel, who's coming for this later, I look forward to uh, cheering him on in the Thunderbike class later on the season. Hopefully, maybe we'll get to see him at Ammon Valley, the half mile track in Wales in about a month's time. Yeah, that's my CCM 604. Oh, what I didn't mention, it's not a 604, it's a 640. It's got a big bore kit in it. Um, so we'll pop outside now and I'll fire it up and we can see what it sounds like. I have just warmed it up. I'm not gonna you know, fire it up and start revving it on uh, just because the camera's here, but the smoke coming off it is from a slight oil spill caused by um, the nasty man Jeff K, number 45, who bumped me off last time around and just uh, punctured an oil line here. So any residual smoke is nothing to do with their uh, dodginess. It's uh, purely a bit of oil on the, on the pipes. Now the other thing I didn't mention in there is that I've left the battery and the electric start on this bike. A lot of the guys rely on the kickstart, but the kickstart is on the left hand side and with a steel shoe on your left boot, I couldn't be asked with that. And for the sake of saving a few kilos of taking the starter motor out and the battery out, I thought, well, It'd be quicker and easier to lose that than, than lose that, so I prefer to have the button. When, so when you're in your leathers and all sweaty on the day, you can watch everyone else struggling and then just... So there's a little bit of baffling in the pipe, but not a huge amount. And then you've got to have the uh, all-important kill switch. And that's it, my CCM604, 640.